Shalom, Shalom. Ka Halal, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Peace and double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the hopeful elect. This lesson is going to be going into Luke, the 12th chapter. All right. I'm going to try to get through as much of this chapter as possible uh, while keeping the lesson succinct as possible. Again, Lord's will is edifying. All right. Luke 12 and 1. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Yep. So in another verse uh, in the book of Matthew, it mentions that uh, the leaven of the Pharisees is their doctrine, their teaching. Okay. Their false teachings. Because they're teaching you that through your own righteousness, you'll be able to make it. And what the Lord came to do was for mercy and to let our people know, which is so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, the true biblical Israelites, that only through him will we have salvation. All right, We have to go through the intercessor that the Heavenly Father set up. And that is Yahweh Shai, our Lord, who they ignorantly call Jesus, All right, the Son of the Most High. Okay, but they were full of these wicked scribes and Pharisees were, were hypocritical. All right, they expected men to do certain things which they themselves wouldn't uh, wouldn't be able to uphold. All right, that's why Yahweh Shai warned of them. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Right, and it goes with everything. All right, whether it be this truth. Or whether it be these left-hand counsels that these devils have, everything, um, everything that's hidden, which a this truth is hidden, okay, to the masses. But eventually, it's going to be on a on a, uh, and it's ha we're in the process of it now. But it's going to be even more magnified during the time of Jacob's trouble, during the time where all the uh, prophecies are simultaneously fulfilled. Okay, going into that uh, Karagma, the RFID chip, the mark of the beast. All right. So no nothing hid will not be known. All right. You have a lot coming out on these elites, these devils, these celebrities, uh, these wicked Israelite celebrities that are into the entertainment world. Okay. The, the, their dealings with Epstein, all these things. So that's an example of things that are hidden being uncovered. All right. This truth. Which was which was uh, so long hidden. As a matter of fact, real quick, I believe it's Second Ezra five, and one. Nevertheless, as coming the tokens, behold, the day shall come that they which dwell upon earth shall be taken in great in a great number. Yep, meaning there are gonna be many that are put to death, and the way of truth shall be hidden, and the land shall be barren of faith. You see, the way of truth shall be hidden. Okay, so now, but now the truth is being uncovered, okay? Third verse, back in Luke 12 and 3, Therefore whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops, right? Because we may have conversations uh, amongst ourselves about this truth, all right, having been given the spirit of truth, but yet, what do we do? We proclaim it upon the housetops, all right? Which, that doesn't mean we actually go on top of a, uh, a house, and say these things, it means that we say it in a public forum for everybody to see. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. Right? Hey, the so called white man can kill the body, but the Heavenly Father has the power to kill you and then bring you back for a judgment. Okay? Which is going to mention it. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body and after have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Yeah, the heavenly father could put you to death and then when the missiles drop could bring you back. And that is what's going to happen. Okay. Many wicked um, individuals that thought that they would escape through death. You know, they're going to be brought back for this final judgment. Okay? Because that's what hell is talking about, the thermonuclear missiles. Okay? 
Also, Esau Esau's gonna be cast into hell, man. Even after you you Edomites die, you're gonna come back as slaves in the kingdom of heaven. So you're gonna be born into hell. And that's gonna be a condition that plays out upon the earth because we're we're uh, in a lower state because hell all it really represents is being in a low position. All right, being in a lower state. Okay. But but when the time comes, you're gonna be you're gonna be in a hellish condition. You devils, all right, you so-called white people. And those uh, of you heathen nations, all right, those that are of the heathen nations, you're going to wake up into a hellish condition. And in reality, after you get your um, the rod of iron from your Howard Shiny elect, eventually they're going to begin to be more so in order and they're actually going to be able to enjoy a righteous rulership. But in the, in the time leading up to that, you're going to have to deal with a lot of hell because you heathen nations are not right okay it says here are not uh, Luke 12 and 6 are not five sparrows sold for two farthings and not one of them is forgotten before the most high all right a farthing is a is like a very minute uh, form of currency I believe it's a fraction of a penny okay and, and talking about the currency back then so if the Most High takes account of that, okay, it says right here, but even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows, you see. Ye are of more value than many sparrows. Okay, so the Lord, the Lord said that, you know, we're more important than sparrows and, uh, you know, sparrows being sold for four, two farthings, we're more important than that, so... Um, you know, the Lord, the Lord is going to take care of us, essentially. That's the point, all right? Because we can't even number the hairs upon our own head. If I ask you brothers and sisters out there right now, how many hairs are upon your head? You can't tell me. I can't tell you how many are upon my head or even my beard, even my mustache. I would drive myself crazy just counting the hairs on my mustache. <laughs> so how much more the hairs upon my head? But the Heavenly Father knows, all right? Also, I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of the Most High God. Right? Okay. So, what do we do? We confess the Mo we confess Yahweh Shai before men. Okay. And then you got a, a spirit of pride upon our uh, majority of our people. They don't think they need an intercessor. They think they can go to the Most High directly. They think they, the Most High is dealing with them and them alone. It would, that is not so. Okay. That is not so. All right. We have to go through the sun, Yahweh Shai, in order to even have a shot at getting in the good graces of the Most High. Okay. And even with an intercessor, we walk on eggshells, man, having this truth. You think that we sit up here as though we're on, we're on some high horse, as though we already got it? No, we know that we need to make our calling of election sure and being diligent, man. And I, I'm exhorting myself. No, I, I know I need to do better. You know, so Yahweh by Shim Yahweh Shai willing. We could all continue to grow and mature in this thing because that's what it's all about. All right. But it says here, not to get too sidetracked, uh, but he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of the most high. See? And Yahweh Shah is coming with the angels. The angels take the take the message up to, to the heavens, man. Okay? So we want the, the, the angels that are watching us to be able to give a good report to Yahweh Hashem El Shai. All right. That's why we have to confess him. And in order to confess him, we have to know his name. All right. Acts 4 and 12 real quick. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There it is. All right, so so that's the name that we have to call upon. Yahweh, the name of the Heavenly Father, and His Son, Yahweh Shai. All right. And whosoever shall speak a word against the, whole, against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Spirit, it shall not be forgiven. You see? Hey, the Lord... Uh, our Lord Yahweh Shai is so humble, he put the understanding before himself. 
he said that because that's the Holy Spirit is the is the spirit of truth. So he basically said that, you know, you could speak a word against him and that it would be forgiven if we repent. But uh, speaking a word against the truth, okay, that would not be forgiven. All right. And this is what happens with a lot of our people. They come across the men of the Lord on the highways and hedges and they and they speak against this truth. Okay. They might hear it for a second and then they eventually what happens? They come against it. All right. But the, the, the men of the Lord, the hopeful men of the Lord, which we pray and hope that we are those men. When we heard this word, when we heard, heard the Holy Spirit, we uh, embraced this truth, man. We, we, uh, we were magnetized to it. We were like moths to the flame. Okay. Well, let me continue reading on. To lock you one second. Yep, so uh, reading on Luke 12 and 11. And when they bring you unto the synagogues and unto magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say. For the Holy Spirit shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to say. You see? The Holy Spirit uh, is going to give us what we have to say in that time. That's why we don't. Uh, even as even some as uh, simple as going on the highways and hedges, we don't really meditate too much on what we're gonna say. We just go out. Uh, brothers typically will put up some prayers and uh, go out and present forth that sacrifice, man, which is our which is our own bodies, following in the footsteps of our Lord. All right. So, but we don't we don't sit here and meditate. Oh, what am I gonna say? I don't know what to say. But, because that's a faithless um, spirit to have. If we believe that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh is with us, His Holy Spirit is with us. He puts it, He puts it in our mind of what to say. There's actual angels around us that are feeding us precepts, feeding us what to say. All right, so that's all a part of having that gift of faith. All right. Okay. 13th verse and one of the company said unto him master speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me now imagine the pride you got to have here it is the lord of lords uh, the king of kings and lord of lords is here and instead of seeking out this knowledge you want you're worried about uh something carnal something uh going into monetary inheritances that's not what the lord came to do to to, to meet out <laughs> to divide the lot of israel all right. And he said unto him, man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Right. So he the Lord perceived that this man was in a covetous spirit. So he cut him automatically. You know, covetous means that you are seeking uh, another man's belongings or what what are uh, the possessions of another man. OK. You might see, uh, I'll give an example. You might see a brother that might have certain things that you want. But a man with wisdom will understand, what, well, that's that brother's lot. That's that's what the Lord gifted him, and praise the Lord for it. All right? But a covetous man is going to want what another man has. It's, it's like a jealous spirit to be covetous. You know? But reading on. All right. Well, also another point is said: a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possess possesseth. Right. So the the main point is to serve you how by Shimei Shai with fear and trembling, not about getting all the amassing wealth and amassing worldly possessions. That's not what life is about. All right. Ain't nothing wrong with um, making money necessarily or having worldly possessions, but if we aren't rich towards you how by Shimei Shai, uh, having worldly possessions is a vain thing. All right. It says, uh, 16th verse, and he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And I, and I love this par parable because it's, uh, it's a heavy lesson to be learned. All right. Reading on. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my beams. My, my barns and build greater 
and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Yeah, that's that comfort, comfortable over mirth spirit. Now, brothers may have moments of mirth. You might have a nice meal. A nice meal is what? Mirth at the end of the day. But uh, we ought not to be consumed by mirth. We ought not to be thinking, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to I'm 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 lay up my goods for many years and be set up and blah, blah, blah. Because all that is vain because the Lord can require our souls, uh, you know, he could, he could uh, require our spirits to be back in the spirit realm. Meaning he could, he could put us to death at any moment. Okay. Uh, Luke 12 and 20. But the Most High said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Right. But what 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 now? The Lord, you you done stored up all these worldly treasures, but you're not rich toward the Lord. All right. And and now the time comes that the Lord requires your spirit. And what and what what do we want our legacy to be? Of the that of the servants of Yahweh by Shem Shai. not of covetous worldly nigger shit. Okay. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward the Most High. You see? And what's what's examples of being rich toward the Most High? Having his knowledge, preaching, all right, uh, being charitable amongst the brethren, things that we ought we all ought to strive to do. Okay? That's being what? Rich toward Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. Oh, what am I? That's that worrisome spirit, which a lot of our people in the world. That's why when that thing came out, the demic hit and the, and the serpent bite came out. All right, when I say serpent bite, I'm talking about um, those shots. Okay, but we use code lingo to be use some subtility because we know they could take our channels down or our pages down and at the end of the day we, we want to be able to connect with the elect out there that's why we uh, use subtle language at times all right which is all in a balance okay it's all in a balance all right but but the wicked of our people they they have they have a over an over worrisome spirit even it, it reminded me of uh uh, Martha and Mary, which I believe were sisters, and Yahweh Shai um, spoke to Mary. I mean, uh, spoke to Martha, Mary's sister, and uh, Mary was concerned with serving the Lord and being around the Lord and learning, right? And Martha, her sister, was like, uh, you know, she she was um, concerned with like, you know, her her duties as a woman, taking care of her household and stuff like that. And Yahweh Shai basically said that uh, Mary have, have chosen that good part, which is to serve um, Yahweh Vashem Yahweh Shai. Okay? He told Martha basically, like, you have care for a lot of matters of this life and all these things, right? But ultimately, Mary has chosen the most important thing, which is to serve the Lord. All right? And, and uh, applying that to, to, the, to the precepts we just read, okay? That is an example of being uh, laying up treasure for yourself and not being rich toward the most high. Okay. And he said unto his disciples, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for your body, what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens for they sow, they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn. And how by Shimei was shy feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? Yeah, are, are we that? We're the sons of God. Uh, under Yahweh Bashem Yahweh the sons of God created the ravens and the fowls and the different creatures. So clearly, the Most High, through His Son, values the, the the sons of God, His elect, more than you know birds. You know, even even though they're beautiful creatures, but yet, you know. The, the, the sons of the sons of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai are the top spirits, man, un, under the heavenly Father and His Son. All right, the elect. So that's who he's he's dealing with. So we ought not to have a worrisome spirit or a doubtful spirit. We ought to be filled with the spirit of faith more and more as the time goes on. 
and and again how do we have the spirit of faith it's it's a gift of mercy so in order to maintain in that spirit we have to pray all right pray and uh pray pray and not faint roughly paraphrasing it okay and which of you without and which of you with taking thought can add to his stature one cubit if ye then be not able to do that which is least why take ye thought for the rest right we can't even do the most minor thing with spiritual power which would be to increase your height if we can't even do that then why are we concerned about other aspects and things that's really out of our hands man think about it do you know what it requires for us to have a hot plate of food at dinner at night to have food in our pantry and food in the refrigerator it's so many different elements involved in that that's simply out of our control now we can work hard and you know pray unto the lord for an increase and work hard to have our daily bread and so on and so forth but even with that being said there's so many aspects of the harvest of the the right conditions the environment for for there to be a harvest for the for the inhabitants of the earth to eat okay okay which we are subject to these environmental circumstances okay that's why the scriptures say that uh that those that have received benefits but have not known me all right we don't we don't control the rain and the sun and the things that uh you know the, the minerals in the soil you know, you can try to tweak certain things when it comes to a garden or uh, crops, but ultimately these things are out of our hands. And that's just one example, let alone the weather. All right. Even if you have a house, if a hurricane category five comes or a tornado, that shit is over with, man. All right. And that's all in the power and the hand of who? Yahweh by Hashem was shot. That's the point. All right. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not. They spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these, right? Some as simple as a lily. All right, because that's the most high Yahabashim Yahshah's creation. If then the most high so clothed the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. Oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, I don't know. These bills are stacking up. I don't know what I'm going to do. Hey, uh, pray on it. You know, pray on it. And, hey, the scriptures do say that faith without works is dead. So, you know, we got to work hard. We got to do what we got to do. Handle our responsibilities. Be mature. Grow in this thing. And the Lord is going to take care of everything else, man. All right? He's, he's, he's controlling everything that goes on anyway. So we ought not to be of a doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. Yeah, that's why when America, Babylon, the great is destroyed, the merchants, they're going to be hurt because they want to be rich. They want to be uh, well off. They want to have substance laid up for generations. Okay? For all these things do the nations of the world seek after and your father knoweth that ye have need of these things but rather seek ye the kingdom of the most high and all these things shall be added unto you and it reminds me of solomon when he came into his seat of power the first thing he asked for was wisdom to rule over israel this great people he didn't ask for it. yo let me have uh baba kusha lord heavenly father let me have um let me have a uh, a great big and mass army so that I can vanquish my enemies. He didn't ask for that. Okay, he didn't ask, oh, let me have uh, the finest women in the world. You know, let me have the finest jewels and stones. We all have um, certain fleshly desires. That's just reality. Okay, now the spirit keeps it in check, but yet uh, certain things, you know, it's just natural because we are royalty. We, we like nice things. You know, it is what it is. But solomon prayed for that wisdom first and with wisdom everything else is multiplied unto us anyway okay and that's what seeking after the kingdom first okay 
Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Right. It's your how about Shimmy Awashah's good pleasure to give us this kingdom. So we ought to serve him in joy and gladness. Because that was always another problem that the, uh, the Heavenly Father had with Israel was that Jake didn't want to serve the Lord gladly. They wanted to do it begrudgingly. Okay? Don't nobody want a, a part-time lover. Don't nobody want a part-time loyal son or daughter. You want uh, loved ones around you that's really going to be down for you and it's actually going to be glad to be your son or daughter or, or, or wife. Right? Same thing with Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right. It says, uh, sell that ye have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. Yeah, that's the truth. All right. This truth is infinite. It never, it's never going to wax old. It's never going to uh, fade away. Okay. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also, right? Whatever you deem to be treasure in this world, that means that it has value, you know? Like, for example, let's name some things that we treasure. The apostles, we treasure the apostles. We reverence them. We give them double honors. All right, the brotherhood, we treasure the brotherhood. That's That has a value to us. We see a value in it, all right? Um, the scriptures, Going out on the highways and hedges, we spend our time on the things that we deem valuable, that we deem to be treasure, because our mind is geared towards it, all right? Again, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also, you see? So if we deem this truth to be the treasure, then what are we going to be geared towards? Studying, uh, praying, calling on the name of the Lord, doing what is required, doing this work, man, Okay? Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. You see? Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. Now, when your loins are girded, that's a preparation for battle. All right? And the, and the garments is like an, uh, like an unto this truth. And the lights is the truth as well. Let your lights be burning and your lights be burning. Okay? It's so like and your lights are burning. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord, when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. See? When the Lord knocks, that first knock, by the, by the second knock, the door is already opening. That's how we want to be. We want to be ready for when Yahweh Shai comes back, man. Okay? We want to be those men that are waiting for the Lord, man. It's, A, hey, the five wise and the five foolish virgins. We want to be in the camp of the five wise virgins that had oil in their lamps, that trimmed their lamps. They were prepared. And that's a form of what? Responsibility. Maturity. Okay? Like Apostle Elder Tahar said, if, you, if, you, uh, if you're diligent in the truth, you, we're going to be diligent in everything else. Okay. So this is all these are these things are all set up as a lesson. All right. This walk, why why are we going through this in America, Babylon the Great? Well, it's the Heavenly Father's will to teach us. Alright? If we were just to be given the kingdom without having gone through anything, what, what would be the lesson in that? What would we learn? We wouldn't learn anything. All we would know is perfection, but the Lord had to show us both sides of it so that we could uh be proper judges. Okay? It says, uh, Blessed are those servants when the Lord, whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Yep. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. You see? And what are we going to be served? The kingdom. Yahweh Shah is going to come, take us up into the chariots, and we're going to live forevermore. We're going to be infinite. We're never going to die, man. All right? So long as we keep these sayings, keep this truth, hold it tight, and endure the hour of temptation that's coming, 
through the spirit and power of your Habba Shem Yashah, we're going to live forever, man. We're going to have an infinite rulership. Who, who, who wouldn't want that? Everybody wants power. Everybody wants to be on top. But, you know, why do you think rap music is so popular? Because all these niggas ever do is talk about being the shit, being on top. <laughs> I'm the man. You know, I got all the... But it all starts with what? What? What is? What is? What is it that allows a man to be on top and stay on top? In righteousness, it is wisdom. Now we know these niggas are sellouts, right? But in the bigger scheme of things, you know, it requires wisdom to have an everlasting rulership, and that is exactly what Yahweh Bashim Yahusha has put in us. A hey, the scriptures say, "Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times." Okay. Right, so let's let's read on though. And if he shall and if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so blessed are those servants. We want to be those servants that when the Lord comes, a uh, real quick one, I believe it's Luke eighteen. Yep, and seven. And shall not, and shall not the Most High avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? Right. So that's going into those servants that when the Lord comes, he's going to find them with their go with their loins girded and their lamps burning. Meaning they're going to be on fire for this truth, man. All right. Either you, either you be on fire or you get put on fire when the missiles come. It's, it's, it's either or. There ain't no in between. Ain't no gray area with your how about Shemiah was shy, man. All right now, Luke 12 and 39, and this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be both broken through. Be ye therefore ready also for the son of man cometh at an hour when ye think not. That's why we have to be prepared. We got to watch. That's why the scriptures say measure thou the time diligently. That's why the scriptures say to watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. That's why the scriptures constantly mentioned for us to prophesy, to um, to be, um, what does the scripture say in uh, 1 Corinthians 14, to be occupied in prophecy? Why is that? Because by in doing so, we're going to be prepared, we're, we're, the Lord is preparing us by watching for the times um, that we're in. For the for the return of the Lord, that's what, that's what, the, that's what it's all about, all right? All these prophecies are leading up to what? The climax, which is Yahweh Shah's return. Okay? The scriptures say that the, 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 hey, the end of this time, uh, that, that the day of doom shall be the end of this time. And the beginning of the immortality for it to come, uh, roughly paraphrasing it. Alright, so that's, that's what we are into, this truth. And leading up to that time when Yahweh Shah comes... We ought to be prepared, all right? That's the point. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us or even to all? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? Yeah, what is the portion of meat? The kingdom. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he, shall, when he cometh, shall find so doing, right? We want to be those that when the Lord returns, he sees us doing his work. He sees us on fire. He sees us calling upon his name. Second Ezra 2, it mentions the, the, the uh, those that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. Okay? That's the marriage. That's the uh, when the Lord marries the nation of Israel once again, the elect. All right? Returning back to that immortal estate. Okay? Of a truth, I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But, and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming, uh, you got a lot of niggas saying that now. Nah, that ain't gonna happen. The Lord is delaying. That's why That's why a lot of guys wanna set up, uh, they wanna set up shop in Babylon, they wanna set up Israelite communities and all that, right? You, you basically, because you're insinuating that the Lord is delaying his coming because you're gonna prepare all this. And building up communities takes a while, all right? So, in doing all that, you're 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 basically planning for the uh, 
for the option that the Lord won't come. Yeah, you, you, you might claim to serve the Lord, but you got a plan B. We don't have no plan B. Our only plan is for the Lord to come and save us, man. There's no plan B. All right. Uh, yeah, we might have a little, uh, you know, if you could get a little bit of paper in this society, then all by all means, that's, that's just being prudent. But uh, ultimately, none of that is our, oh, that's not our way out. That's not our end all be all. That's not our, oh, this is my goal or whatever, you know. Our goal is to receive a crown of life, salvation, to be delivered from this destruction that's coming. All right. But again, it says, but in, but. But, and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the man servants, the men servants and maidens, and to eat and drink and to, and to be drunken, right, off these other philosophies, you, you beat in the other servants, which is the prophets, because you're drunk off those other philosophies, and IUIC is included in that, okay? The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in sunder. Yeah, that means to chop your ass in two, man. And will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. See? Many claim to believe in the Heavenly Father and His Son, but when the time comes, it's going to be revealed that they do not believe. Okay? And that servant, which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Yeah, for those that have tasted of the heavenly gift, you know, it's going to be worse for them. Because they knew better. You got a lot of guys out there, they didn't know about this truth for years and years and years. And they never changed their life. They never amended their ways. They never stood up for the right thing. They, they just continue to be lukewarm and toe the line. The Lord does, ain't dealing with that lukewarm bullshit, man. Okay? But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom have, and to whom men have committed much, of him will, of him they will ask the more. Right. If you have like certain gifts, then more is expected of you. Okay. Let's say you have a few, let's say you have a few sons, and you know a couple of them are some real boneheads, but you got one that's bright. If the bonehead sons do some stupid shit, you would kind of, you're expected. Like, yeah, they're a bunch of idiots anyways. They're foolish. They're sottish. They never listen to me anyways. But the son that's bright, that had some sense with him, that had the knowledge that was gifted with that, you're going to have more of a higher expectation for him. And that's just how, to, how it is with us. All right? Because the Lord gave us these gifts of the knowledge and wisdom and understanding, the Holy Spirit. All right, the gift of faith, all these gifts that we've been given, it's various gifts, man. Certain brothers have uh, brothers have beautiful gifts in this thing, man. But, but the main gift is the Holy Spirit. So having that gift, the Lord has certain higher expectations of us than to just a regular, everyday, simple nigga out there, all right? I am come to send fire on the earth, and what will I if it be already kindled, right? Hey, the Lord, he's going to bring that destruction. But, you know, when the, when he comes, it's already going to be, um, it's already going to be calamities, destruction, riotous behavior, uh, uproars of the people. You know, you're going to have these giant forest fires, but even on a spiritual sense, the people themselves are going to be inflamed and they're going to be rebelling against their authorities, the powers that be, you know, uh, all these plagues. So the, the earth is going to be essentially in shambles when the Lord comes and he's just going to finish the job off. All right, because he's going to be the one bringing them plagues anyways. All right, so it's like in Mortal Kombat, you know, when they set up for the fatality, they're already done. They already lost the match. When, you, when you're when in a position to get the, fat, get the fatality, you already been had the victory. You already been kicking that ass. All right, but when that fatality comes, that's just the finishing touch. <laughs> and that's what Yahweh Shah is going to come and do, man. But I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how am I straight until it be accomplished? And that's talking about him sacrificing himself. All right? Because a baptism means a cleansing. All right? So the Lord, his, his, his uh, blood being spilled cleansed our sins. Okay? Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, 
I tell you nay, but rather division. Oh, wait a minute. This this kills that whole, oh, he loves everybody. Everybody sing Kumbaya together doctrine. This kills it because he said he came to bring division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two and two against three. Right. And that's the curses. Uh, but it's only going to be more magnified in the days to come because those that truly believe in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai are not going to be able to dwell amongst or be at peace with those that do not believe and vice versa because the Lord wants that division he has separated us from the majority of our families man because they ain't right they're um, they're given into the ways of the beast and if you're given into the ways of the beast you have very low carnal nature you have a base uh, mindset okay so that's why we had to be that's what it is to be holy to be separate all right, for from henceforth there shall be five and one house divided, three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son and the son against the father. The mother against the daughter and the daughter against the mother. The mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Yeah, division all around. And he said also to the people, when ye see a cloud rise out of the west straightway, ye say there cometh a shower and so it is. And when ye see the south wind blow, ye say, there come a fish, uh, Salakia. There will be heat. There will be heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth. But how is it that ye did not discern this time? See? You could tell the weather patterns just by looking at the sky you could look up in the morning and see all right yeah today is overcast it's looking like it's going to rain later you know I mean, back then in the ancient times ancient israel when there was a south wind um that would be a lot of heat coming into the land so they would be able to tell that it was going to be a scorching day but the lord is saying that if you could tell all these things how come you can't tell the signs of the times you can't discern what's going on you can't tell uh, that, that we're in the time of the end because remember, when Yahweh Shai walked the earth 2,000 years ago, all right, and he now sits as an immortal power under the heavenly Father on his right hand, all right, our intercessor, our Lord, our, our King, our Savior, everything, all right? But when he walked, that was the beginning of the end, really back then. And now how much more are we closer to? Now we're in the beginning of sorrows. So we're really, really at the end. Okay. Hey, this summer is practically over, man. It's going to be a whole lot more judgment going out and leading into what? The implementation of the mark of the beast, which from the apostle great, great millstone on down to the brothers uh, and the babes and Yahweh Shai's myself that have been teaching this doctrine. We've been saying it. All right. And especially our apostles been saying it for, for quite a long time, for years and years, longer than us. That there's going to be a time where you're going to have the implementation of the mark of the beast, the chip. You're going to have to have a chip inside of you, implanted in you, in order to partake in this society. And as far-fetched as it sounds, this is exactly what we see playing out in the earth right now. Okay? The prophecy is, the prophecy is speaking. The vision is speaking. Alright? Yea, and why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right? When thou goest with thine adversary to the magistrate, as thou art in the way, give diligence that thou mayest be delivered from him, lest he hail thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and the officer cast thee into prison. Yeah, and that's, uh, the adversary is uh, these Edomites, man, these cops, all right, whoever it might be. And this is why a lot of our people get shot dead, because they neglect the scripture to agree with their adversary. All right, to 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 uh, give diligence, to to be mindful, knowing that we're in a we're in a low position. They're in a position of power, so we have to do something called entreating them. All right, be nice. You know, when the officer pull you over, hey, officer. You know, uh, my apologies. I'm not sure uh, what my offense is, but hopefully, you know, hopefully we can work this out. Whatever it is, and just just entreat them. You know, praying to the Lord to give us a spirit to do so. All right, I tell thee that thou shalt not depart thence till thou hast paid the very last mite. <laughs> and that's like a, a very minute form of currency. That's how it is with Esau now, though. If you don't pay 
every bit of that uh, parking bill or whatever bill it is, you could be like 50 cents short. Esau going to clock you for that. You know, let's say your mortgage is uh, 2,500 and you pay 24.99. They're going to they want that extra dollar. <laughs> the agreement wasn't for 24.99. The agreement was for 2,500. If not, you're going to get floor closed on and the bank is taking that shit. All right. But hey, with that, I'm going to go ahead and close it out. Lord's will is edifying. Call Halal Yomla, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Makak Wadash. All right, Shalom to the hopeful elect. And Lord's will, I can catch you on the next one. Shalom.